Okay. So tonight we're going to be uh... the Therapeutics MD is a women's health uh, biotech. Uh, they have three FDA approved drugs, which is sort of uh, unusual for a, a company of this size. So their market cap was 570 million at the beginning of last week. And then they did a raise, I believe Wednesday of 110 million. It closed at about a buck 85 a share. Uh, and the stock closed at about 190 on Friday. So it's trading right around where that offering uh, came in. Also, the, the offering was telegraphed a couple quarters ago, I believe, on the said that they would probably have to do one. Um, the stock could run, it pretty much doubled this year as maybe part of a little short squeeze. And Ashley, so they capitalized. Ashley, you see it? Yep. You see it? I see it. Okay. Yep, Am I on the right slide? Is that good? That's perfect. All right. Um, so it seems like, you know, this could very well be their last raise. Um, I would bet that the CEO said at that at some point in the past, um, but I'll kind of go through why I think they've kind of hit that inflection point uh, going forward. Um, so basically the, the three drugs that they have, or uh, number one, and I'm pretty much just going to focus on Anavera because you, you can kind of do the quick math on that one and, and sort of figure out um, what, what kind of what it looks like, what the company looks like. So they launched in uh, July of 2020. And basically it's a, a birth control device. It's, and it's very unique on the market. I believe they were seeking a, a separate designation for it. And I believe that is still outstanding. I haven't seen news that it is, um, but basically it's uh, like currently on the market, there's a, uh, something called NuvaRing, which is a, a monthly that you put in and, um, And then you kind of, um, after, after a month, you got to go get another, another one from the, because the insurance will only cover it on a monthly basis. You got to go get another one the following month. Um, Anavera is a similar product, but for an entire year. And apparently it's also more comfortable. And because that was sort of one of the, the concerns with the NuvaRing product is that it wasn't um, sort of that comfortable. So that also creates favorable economics because it's sort of um, priced better. It's cheaper basically to sell a one year versus a monthly. And um, what recently happened in that space is the NuvaRing was, is no longer preferred. And now the Anovera is the preferred for a CVS. And that just started recently at the beginning of this year. So that there's been sort of a slow uptick in the, in the scripts and I apologize, I haven't been able to find a tracker for it. I remember seeing one in the past that sort of, you can actually see every Friday kind of what their, what their script count is. So it's one of these companies that is fairly easy to do channel checks on. And the scripts have been growing, but I would expect with their new designation and approval, well, with their new um, designation as a preferred, that they should start to see a, a bigger uptick in the scripts for their product. Also the uh, NuvaRing, their competitor is one, the patent has expired and two, they were taken off of coverage and is a lot more expensive. So when those people go in to renew their prescriptions, they're gonna end up um, kind of looking for alternatives, be it a generic or moving to Anavera where that's covered by a lot of different insurance providers. Um, so, and birth control largely is, is covered a lot of, I know I'm in California, California covers birth control and there's a lot of states uh, like that. Uh, also, another big piece of news on Anovera is it is patented through 2030. So they've got a very long runway. I think it was initially five years and they're two years in right now. And so having it extend that long is pretty compelling. Just looking at the broader market for Anavera, there's about 19, 20 million uh, women on birth control in the US. If they were to get maybe 1% of that or 200,000 uh, prescriptions at about 1200 bucks a piece, you're looking at maybe 240, 250 million a year of revenues. 
And, you know, they, I mean, they used to, in their presentations a couple of years back, they were sort of shooting at getting to a billion dollars, which is roughly where Nuva Ring was at its peak. It was at a billion and it's, um, you know, it, I would say a, a better product than Nuva Ring was, particularly if you only have to get your prescription once a year. Um, so just looking at that versus the, the market cap, it's a uh, pretty impressive. And you could see that a large pharma company would, would find that type of revenue for the next 18 years to be pretty, pretty valuable, especially given the, the quality of the product. Um, and I'll just touch on the other two. Invexi uh, treats vulvar uh, atrophy due to menopause. So you can also look at it. Anavera is treating kind of women between sort of the late teens to menopause. And then Invexi and their next product, uh, Bejuva, are for women in um, sort of more in their menopause years um, or, who are probably less likely to need Anavera. Uh, Bejuva was launched in uh, 2019, and it's kind of a, a product that treats hot flashes. It is a non-combination uh, drug, and I believe it compete, competes with combo drugs. So it's cheaper and uh, less side effects and safer. Um, the third, they have a vitamin kind of Vitacare business, and they've just signed a couple of deals uh, with some other drugs to, that are kind of going to go into that channel. But their idea was to divest it. So I think investors, when this um, this raise came up, they figured that that the company was taking advantage of the current kind of um, ability to raise capital in the market um, to to just go ahead and do that because they were sort of thinking, well, they might be able to spin off Vitacare, get about fifty million in proceeds, still maintain a kind of a royalty or a revenue interest in Vitacare going forward. Um, and maybe not need to raise, but now that they've raised $110 million, they've got several quarters, I would say enough to get them to profitability. They, uh, maybe a couple months ago, they were expecting to be EBITDA profitable by the end of this year. And they're thinking, you know, that's kind of before COVID started to peak up again in Q4. And in Q4, uh, they or sorry, the beginning of January, they started to say maybe it, they'd reach uh, EBITDA positive uh, by the end of by the middle of 2022. I think is a kind of a more of a worst case. It's kind of um, similar to sort of other drug manufacturers. COVID has created um, and medical devices and kind of everyone in that space. It's been tougher for sales reps to get in front of doctors. Um, they've been doing some virtual and online sort of promotions, but really that's, that's been what has delayed the company this past year in ramping up quicker. And only since then they've gained more coverage and now they've, they've kind of got enough money to kind of get through and properly launch each of these products. Although they're clearly, they're focusing on the first two. Um, and you can say that sort of Bejuva and Invexi um, provide sort of a stable base business of revenue that sort of between them about maybe 35 million. And Anavera is really the, I would see the, the valuable one on, on which I kind of would value the, the company. Um, and if you take the sort of the, the 50,000 foot approach, if they could get to a billion in sales, you know, you'd, you know, a company would probably want to pay multiple times that to be able to sell that product. So that, that's kind of how I look at it. If, if big pharma, we're going to kind of come in and, and take them out. Um, so I guess uh, if we want to go to the next slide, uh, this is just kind of looking at the Anavera uptick in prescriptions over the past uh, few months. Notice they launched, they did sort of official launch in July of 2020. And it's kind of been a little bit slow out of the gate, but they're definitely taking market share from the competitors at this point. And that should gain steam as they have better coverage and um, a stronger sort of sales force to come out and, and make that happen and get in front of doctors and kind of spread the word. I would say investors sort of perceive management as being, well, 
one, not very shareholder friendly because they've done a number of raises in the past. And two, they probably haven't uh, ramped the sales as, as quickly as, as people would have liked to have seen. But uh, we all probably know a few companies that haven't ramped as fast as we've hoped. Um, and looking at the, we flipped to the next slide, talks a little bit about their payer progress and, and sort of how they've gained more and more coverage uh, over the kind of last couple of quarters. And that should sort of continue and start to provide a, a tailwind. So you've got the, the kind of the coverage tailwind. Um, they've got the cash. And as long as we're coming out of COVID and we can kind of, they can get in front of doctors, uh, they should start to, to look pretty good more toward the end of the year. And um, given kind of the stock price is sort of similar to the, the raise, what might hopefully be their last raise, uh, it, it seems like it's a good time to look at the company. Um, yeah, I think we could probably open it up for questions. All right, Cole, thank you for that presentation. Um, Ashley, I'm gonna start with a couple questions myself. Um, this stock has been based on I, I've known about this stock for a while. Um, I, I've been looking at, you know, just, just based on the price action and the short position is 24.6%, but not only based on that, but based on how it trades off of news, it just seems like a stock that these shorts have had full control over in, in the past couple of years. Um, you, could, you could just see it. You could see how, you know, retail buys up exciting news and the shorts hammer it down. So, what's what's it going to take to change that you, you know do, do you think we're at an inflection point there and why have they been so um, convicted in, in in their short position here yeah um so i've been yeah i've been following it as well for a few years and really just sort of started a position this year um because of the it looks like they're hitting that they're going to be able to hit that you can see that they're going to hit that inflection point at some point this year, if the if the scripts keep rising and the revenue keeps rising and they hit their their break even, um, they've got a number. Never mind, I didn't talk about. They've got a number of new kind of sales initiatives and social media initiatives that they didn't have before, in kind of getting the word out on their um, prescriptions. But yeah, the it does have a share, heavy short interest, and part of that is that they've always been a little light on cash. Uh, they've got uh, debt covenants. Um, they needed to hit 20 million in Q4, which they've done. They had to renegotiate Q1 and Q2 uh, covenants down from original numbers, kind of based on um, COVID. That's with their lender, uh, Sixth Street. Um, but they've been kind of very lenient with them. And I think as long as the momentum continues in the direction we're heading now, the shorts are going to want to kind of quietly exit by the end of the year because they're not going to want to um, keep these positions forever. But I mean, they burn a, a good amount of cash and they their products have already, have kind of always been, oh, we're going to launch soon and we're going to get this designation soon. And now that's kind of all happened and they've got the coverage and they're ready to go. Um, great. Did you, uh, maybe I missed it. Did he have like a, a fair value that you had calculated in terms of the market cap? Hmm. Um, I did not provide one, but I would say you know, previously the, the company kind of thought they actually in their investor presentation a few years back, they used to kind of say that they thought each one of these three products could do a billion dollars in sales. Um, I think if if you look at Anavera just getting one or two percent of the market, and Nuva Ring had five percent, and it's now off patent and not covered anymore. Um, you know, you're looking at two fifty to five hundred million of revenues. So if someone were to come in and pay say 5x that you'd be looking at maybe two and a half billion market cap so with today's raise or sorry last week's raise I, 
I think you'd probably put it at, at sort of maybe 10, 15 bucks in that range. Okay, fair enough. Uh, just one more kind of comment, more than a question before we open up the floor. Um, I found it pretty intriguing when you look at their, their, their uh, products, you know, they cover the whole spectrum of women's demographics, right? From you said 18 to menopause and menopause thereafter very focused company. And uh, I, I always like that uh, in, in a stock. I think that's something that is attractive to Wall Street because it's easy to tell the story. Uh, you know. And I'm just wondering, do you know if there are any digital health companies uh, that are focused on women's health? And you know, maybe if there's not, I think that could be a catalyst. Uh, there's all kinds of digital health companies coming out there, and you know, I just wonder with COVID and everything, and people not checking out as much. Or I think someone mentioned GoodRx has been a tailwind for uh, men getting prescriptions for Viagra or something like that. You know, instead of going to your doctor, something embarrassing. You know, I wonder right. if. I, I, I don't know. I just imagine, you know, imagine if there was a, a woman's telehealth app, you know, that all focus on women's health and that might be a big tailwind for this company. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think of any. I mean, I'm not too familiar with the ins and outs of hims and hers, but I'm, I'm assuming the, the hers side covers, <laughs> covers part of that. Oh yeah. I've heard of that company. I don't know what they do. Maybe I should look at that. Yeah. There's a, if, uh, if anyone checks out their slide presentation on page, uh, page seven of the recent investor deck, which I'll, I'll post in the room. They kind of go through the M&A activity in the women's health space over the last few years by large cap companies, which also I, I like seeing that in the space in their presentation, because ultimately I'd, I'd really like to see a buyout. I mean, they've got a, a fantastic, all three products are really good. And particularly in Avera, it's game changing. Be nice to see a big pharma take them out and really ramp those sales. So they show kind of four or five companies that have been involved in M&A in the women's health space, uh, particularly that, that people can check out. Cool. All right, uh, that'll be it for me. Uh, Rob, if you're there, uh, you can handle the rest of the Q&A. We got any questions? Yeah, no problem. So there was one question in the chat from John S. Uh, or someone asked about what is the cash runway? Tom Dub asked. Well, it looks like, yeah, I think John answered it, but it's basically, it kind of gets them into 2022, kind of mid 2022 with uh, the 110 million that they raised. Uh, in the press release, they said that they were gonna possibly, they said they may use it for uh, debt reduction, but the primary uh, use of the raise is to commercialize all three products and uh, a little bit for general corporate purposes. So I'm guessing they'll reduce debt if uh, things go really well. Got it. And if anybody has any other questions, click on participants in the bottom middle of the screen. And then to the right, there'll be an option to raise your hand and we'll unmute you. In the meantime, I have a question, Ashley. So I'm, I'm familiar with Nuva Ring and how it works. And I assume Anavera may be similar, but it lasts a whole year. That's actually, I know the Nuva Ring had tons of like purchases and high interest and made a lot of money. If Anavera lasts a whole year, and it's so obvious that the product is kind of going to sell out and be big, why hasn't did it affect the TXMD price? That's a good question. I think it's just um, getting the word out. I don't think it's it's very well known. Don't think that that sales is this company's expertise, unfortunately. And they're kind of they've been working on that. But um, yeah, I would agree. I mean, if you don't have to go in monthly to to fill a prescription, if it's you know, the same price or even cheaper, I believe it's cheaper than, than Nuvering on a 12, 12 month basis. Um, and it's also more comfortable. It's made of a more pliable material. Um, so you don't get some of the, either the, the bleeding or the discomfort that, that came from uh, Nuvering. Yep. Um, kind of a whole host of reasons. The 
answer actually makes sense to me because I never heard of Anna Vera before. A few people mentioned it here, and I've heard of Nuva Ring from multiple people. So it makes sense. I'm glad they have a better product because I heard Nuva Ring had a lot of problems. Uh, Mark Gomes had a question. He put it in the chat. What's the capital structure look like with all those raises? Do they have any number of warrants outstanding? Um, I knew I was going to get asked this. Um, there are, I don't believe there are any warrants. There are some options, but I don't think that it's that dilutive. Um, I'll have to get back to you on I think it's more the stock Actually, options. I'm going to unmute John S. because he has some of the answers to the question. Oh, well. Thank you. So, John, if you want to jump in at any time. Yeah, Rob, can you hear me? Yes. So, um, I was typing in the chat. So, yeah, I don't recall any warrants, which is pretty common in, in the biotech space. Um, typically, their MO is to raise below market a decent amount. Um, there are some options out there uh, for management, but they're pretty minor compared to the amount of shares out there. So um, you've got common shares issued, some warrants, out, I mean, not warrants, some options. And uh, of course, there's some debt out there that has been pushed out a ways, but um, not the typical warrants that you find with healthcare companies. If there's any positive, uh, to Todd's point, uh, it's been a train wreck with of things and this would certainly be better if a big company was selling it but the, the capital structure would be common a little bit of options out there um, no warrants that I recall and then a couple hundred million maybe in debt with with the payments and things coming due being pushed out um, so I hope that helps okay thank you and then Lionel you had a question. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Um, actually, so did you say uh, the aloe vera is the, the preferred product for CBS Caremark or non-preferred? Uh, preferred. Okay. Um, because can can you go back to the slides? Because I I thought it said non-preferred uh, on one of the slides. No. Yeah, it's you know, old, the CVS slide said non-preferred, I believe. It's an old slide. I think, oh, okay. yeah, I think it, that changed uh, the beginning of this year. Yeah, I did see that as well uh, in the presentation. You can okay. look them up on the formulary app on your phone. Uh, they're preferred in NuvaRings uncovered. <laughs> so, uh, like, how much do patients pay for uh, Anubera? Is it no cost at all? It's typically no cost. Okay. So how, how much would it be cash price? So um, like what, what's in it for CBS Caremark to uh, pay for the brand new, you know, product instead of, uh, uh, cause you know, new rings available as a generic now. So it's, it's, I would imagine it's cheaper for uh, the insurance to pay for a new ring instead of aloe vera. So, why would they do that? I'm just curious. I believe it's pretty competitive. I thought I saw a slide that said that they were they were very competitive, not cheaper than the generic. It, it, I mean, the, the, isn't the generic uh, one month? You got to get every month. This, this lasts for 12 months. I, I think they can make it competitive because yeah. of that. If you multiply by, yeah, because you, you don't have to multiply by 12. Um, so it's, it's, it's competitive. And there's no clear yeah. answer on that. The, the, by state, by state, it varies about rules and things. And with the Affordable Care Act, there's a lot of rules about birth control in states like California, Washington. It's not a real clear answer, what, what you're asking there. But you are right. Some of the generics could be cheaper, multiplied out. But then also um, um, with Nuvarine going there, I mean, this is a different class as an annual ring, which is differentiated. And um, it is complicated how all the numbers work for all these players with these products. But um, uh, clearly with the Merck product being uncovered, which is pretty unheard of. Um, but depending on the state though, you wouldn't just bop in and cash pay and get Anavera cheap probably. But some states you would, like Washington state requires basically that 
you offer, you know, all of them with no copay. I mean, there's a, so there's a lot of rules, but it is something that's pretty broadly supported by Republicans and Democrats on birth control, but it's not a real clear answer as to what it would cost in a particular yeah. place. It's kind of confusing to be honest. And then just, just to clarify though, like Nuvering, you can get a three month at a time actually, but still uh, getting one year supply of uh, aloe vera, you know, it's obviously better, but Nuvering, you can get a three month at a time. De depending, on the, depending on the insurance though, depending on the insurance. Some insurance only does it one month at a time. Oh yeah. Does Nuva Ring need to get installed once a month, or is it? Yeah. Every uh, three months. Yeah. Um, so. And, it, and it's patient. Get... Sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry. It's it's patient controlled. So. The. The woman is the one installing, as opposed to the doctor, like an IUD or something else. Every four weeks. Yeah. Um, so Nuvering, you have to keep it in fridge, and then you change it like every 21 days. It's like three weeks on, one week off. And Anna Vera, you would leave in for the full year, or you would just use it for the full year? Oh, it's washable, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. it's also three it's also three weeks and on one week out right oh same cycle but you just kind of hold on to it for the year Got it. Yeah. that's correct some people use it off label but on label uses is to do the same as Nuvering. you would think it would become preferred very quickly if you could kind of keep it for a full year and not have the hassle of going back and forth to get prescriptions and doctors and everything else there's a great use case for military as well because it's hard with the refrigeration and being out in the field. Uh, and there's already a partner that sells to the military. There's a partner that sells to colleges. And then the college thing has been squelched because of COVID shutting down. You know, the clinics aren't quite as available, but there's a lot of tailwinds that will pick up when that opens up. So, I, I may have missed. Anna Vera doesn't need to be refrigerated? No. Wow, that's great. No, that's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, that's all the questions that I had. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That looks like all the questions in the chat. Great. Thank you, uh, Ashley, for that presentation. We'll see if this story tra trading VIP presentation here will be the uh, inflection point for shorts to start running away. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> so um, we do actually have a TechSMD research group that has been open for quite some time, um, maybe close to a year. Uh, Stephen will drop that link into yeah, um, I just put it in the chat. Great. Thanks. That's that links in the chat if you're not in there yet. Um, I got a note earlier before we move on that apparently my screen was not sharing when we were showing the returns. So I just want to Get that up here again, and you can see the top ones there. Uh, Real Network from Rob, 300%, then Dan Carlson's Adam, Mark Gomes Summer, Chris and Florian, Florian Identive, which has really surged in the past couple weeks with a bunch of good news, um, and then Dario and so on from there. Wow, a lot of 100%. So um, we are looking at po uh, possibly, uh, if I can find the time this week, to put this up dynamically on our website with a Google spreadsheet that just you know, people can check out um, updating live in real time. So uh, that's something we're going to be pursuing. So you don't have to just see it once a week here on the VIP presentations. All right. So with that, uh, let's just go over upcoming events before we go into Trade of the Week. And actually, I think um, we have a lot to talk about on Trade of the Week. So I'm happy we're ending a little bit early on the uh, preferred prepared presentation here. But coming, uh, going forward, we have Larry Jasinski of Rewalk uh, presenting to us 4.30 p.m. this Wednesday. Earnings are Thursday morning. That's fascinating. Uh, I'm curious to see if we can uh, read anything between the lines on Wednesday afternoon. Um, also, this is a stock that is a, a supernova candidate by Rex. Still waiting for Rex to open his Instagram. He was supposed to do it, you know, taking time. But as soon as he opens his Instagram, you know, I'll send those links over. Real Walk Chart, especially one of the first ones he uh, presents for us. Um, and then Wednesday, February 24th at 4.30 is Jonah Lupton. Man, Jonah Lupton is fast becoming almost like a mini 
Kathy, Kathy Woods. Um, huge following, his moving markets, his focus on uh, companies that are like around the billion dollars. Uh, incredible stuff is, is up over 100% this year so far and is, is potentially going to be opening up an ETF this year uh, as well. So uh, really fast becoming a, a very powerful force. So um, let's see let's see if we can have him. He, we, he was supposed to come a couple weeks ago, but he had to cancel. It's a very busy guy. So hopefully he'll be able to stay to this commitment and we'll get to hear from him on February 24th. So that's our upcoming agenda. Uh, and now we're going to turn off our recording here so we can focus on trade of the week.